Hello, today we're going to be going over the new extrication equipment that will be at station 27. We have the Hearst Hydraulics 333 spreaders and the Hearst Hydraulics 311 cutters. Both of these tools are battery operated. This battery will last for approximately 40 minutes of continuous use. The same battery is used in both tools. The battery will come with a station charger. And it can also be stored in the tool. It is a no fuss battery. You do not have to change it out all the time. It does not have the maintenance requirements of a typical Motorola radio battery. During your daily truck check, you'll notice a battery indicator. Simply push straight in on the button and the lights will illuminate to the volume of truck. This battery will operate at 100% capacity throughout the volume of charge. An example being if you're down to 10% of the battery, the tool is still operating at 100%. batteries slide into the rear of the tool, push it in, firmly make sure it's seated. Each tool will come with two batteries and one charging station. The charging station has two lights. The light on the left is the indicator for the charging system itself. If it's charging, it'll be solid red. If there is a problem with the base station, the core, or the power supply, this light will blink. When the battery is inserted firmly, the light, the light will indicate. When it's charging, it will be solid. When it reaches 100%, it will blink green. If there's any issues with the battery, the light will blink. The manufacturer recommends the batteries be stored in the tool, in the charger, or a protective case. Sometimes in a complicated rescue situation, we need to use a delicate touch. The tool can be feathered, meaning it can be slowly opened. And I'll demonstrate that here by turning the wheel. You'll notice the tips will start to open up very slowly. This feathering action can also be done while the tool is being closed. While these are a battery tool, they are still a hydraulic rescue tool. There is a hydraulic bladder inside of this tool. It's important to note that while these are heavy duty rescue tools, they still can break. When they're being transported, we need to ensure that they are securely strapped down to the apparatus. We don't want them bouncing around in the compartments. 
maintenance on these tools is fairly simple. Wiping down the outer body with a damp cloth. For the tips, squeeze, remove. They can be cleaned with a wire brush, mild soapy water. They are steel so that they, they can rust. So you want to coat them with a high temperature grease. Make sure when you're cleaning you use your cloth to clean around the pens here. Snap, make sure they're locked into place. It should be noted the manufacturer recommends no cleaners that come out of aerosol container. That means no WD-40. High temperature grease is recommended. Damp cloth to clean the outside of the tool. The plastic body is a wear item. It's kind of a sacrificial shell. The handle is a normal wear item. And the boot on the cutters is a normal wear item. The manufacturer says it has a lifespan of approximately three to five years. Somebody wants to come up here. Who's first? Okay. Power's on. By the way, I didn't mention in class, um, it's, it's easy. Uh, you can hold this tool this way, or you can hold the tool this way. It doesn't matter. I like holding the tool this way with the bottom of the tool on my hip. Now I have kind of three points of contact. It's not, the other way's not wrong. I just feel as though it's more comfortable this way. Your call. So I'm going to lay it in here. I'm going to run it up here. Come on. Remembering before you make any movements, the last thing you do is read the owner's manual. Oh. Is it right in there? Yep. Okay, so what happened 